As everyone sees, I'm going to be speaking about Target Springs. How many of you visited Target Springs? It looks like a lot of you. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about what I do, and then I'll get started um, about the presentation. Well, this is my company. It's called Preserve Your Past. What I do is I'm a multimedia company dedicated to preserving the history of individuals as well as preserving the history of Florida. What that means is I want to make it a mission for people to have their histories so it's not lost. You know, have you ever felt like your history will be lost someday? Well, that doesn't have to happen if you contact me. I'll videotape it. As you can see, I offer a variety of services. Uh, I offer life history video tributes, photography, that's my main thing. I've been doing photography since 2014. I enjoy it so much. Photo restoration with restoring old photos that are damaged or uh, are just damaged or misplaced or abused. Then I have my Florida history books. I had bought one today, which I'm going to be speaking about, Historic Tartan Springs. This is my second book. I have uh, the Florida ABC book, and you'll see one more I'm doing and what I've done in a minute. Um, I'm also doing life history tribute books for people, which taking old photos of them and then new photos of them and just uh, making a nice uh, gift for someone uh, to enjoy. And what is my mission for my business? to educate people about the history of Florida and have people's legacy and history preserved in important ways. Well, my photography is displayed right now at Serendipity Cafe, as well as some other places, but this is my main place where my photos are for sale. They are for purchase uh, for $55, so if you go there, it's in Dunedin on Main Street, right across from East Manor and the East Dunedin Hospital. It's a nice organic cafe. It's a healthy place so you could get some healthy food. They offer breakfast all day, so it's my newest place. And all these photos that you'll see are mine, so uh, I hope you can check them out soon. Well, these are my three books, which I uh, told you about too. I didn't tell you about this one, so I'll tell you about that. Well, that's my Ford ABC book. What that is, is a collection of the alphabet with different Florida landscapes, animals, plants, uh, captured in an alphabet book. My next book is Historic Tarpon Springs, which is the basis for this presentation. It goes into more detail of the sites of Tarpon Springs. I can't cover all of them today, but that book covers most of them. And my third book, which I just released this year, is new. Uh, in July, I released this book, A Photographic Journey. What that is, it's a collection of over 100 photos I've taken from the years 2014 to 2018. And uh, it's just a nice gift for all the photography lovers. If you love nature, you'll love this book. Well, my up and coming releases is Historic Palm Harbor. A photographic journey. That will be available for purchase on Amazon uh, in September as well as a limited one I'll have available. This is next year's book coming out. I want to let you guys know. Historic Pinellas County, a photographic journey. So be sure to check those out. My, and I always post on Facebook. If you're ever on Facebook, go get updates. There's business cards here up in front. And, in the back. So if you want more information about how to follow me and how to get information on my books, it'll be on there as well as come to me after the presentation and I'll tell you more about it. And all of my books that I do are available for purchase on Amazon. <coughs> well, before I get started with the presentation, I'm going to show you a quick video. And then we'll get right into it.
can still visit the sponge exchange today. A few remnants are still available, but part of it is demolished and it's now a shop. So I'll show you some views in a second. As you see, here's some views of what the sponge exchange still looks like and what it kind of used to look like. This is where they would store the sponges in the sponge exchange. This is a plot to John M. Cookor, who I mentioned before, is responsible for bringing the sponge industry uh, to Tarpon. That's in there, and that's John Cheney who opened, uh, that's a memorial plot to John Cheney who opened the sponge in 1911. Okay, this is another famous place, the Spring Bayou. The Spring Bayou is a, a wonderful gathering place for an amazing celebration called the Epiphany. That Epiphany is where they throw a cross, they commemorate Jesus' baptism by throwing a cross and it's signifying in the River Jordan. And it's a Greek celebration celebrated on January 6th. And young boys between the ages of 16 and 18 die and to retrieve the cross and one of them does and they uh, get the cross and they get blessed with blessings and love, supposedly. So here's some pictures from this year's celebrations. You can see Greek boys are having a fun splashing time. And this is the victory uh, of the cross. You can see a lot of people gather here. People from all over the world come to celebrate the epiphany. And it's a huge celebration in the Greek Orthodox and Tartan so you can visit it. And this was a wonderful celebration, or not a celebration, well, it was a wonderful event, special event to me, because I got to be part of a movie called Epiphany that's supposedly coming out sometime this year. I don't know the exact date, but you get to see. I was an extra, and down here they're filming a scene for it. My next place on that is. Yes. I'm sorry. Manatee also come into the bayou. Yes. Manatee also. The bayou is a gathering place for the Manatee as well as uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, the bayou also has an event for the 4th of July. The cult, this is the Tarkin Springs Cultural Center. This used to be the old city hall and it was built in 1910. It's Greek Revival style. So you can see that one of the locations for the library and fire department used to be here. So you could still uh, visit the cultural center today. Tarpon Arts Homes and Family. This is the Tarpon Springs City Hall, uh, where the current city office is, where the mayor's office all the city departments, the Tarpon Springs are located on Pine Street. This building is the old Tarpon Springs High School. It was built in 1925, and now it's the current performing arts center. So you can still see plays in there. It's a nice venue. I've been inside there, as you'll see in this next picture. I met a very important person. That person is Mayor Alvarez, it's Mayor Chris Alvarez, it's the mayor of he endorsed my book and he enjoyed it. He's a very nice man and I enjoyed meeting him and discussing my book and partners. This is Silver King Brewing Company. It was, it used to be the old Tarpon Springs Jail um, before it in 1909. And uh, it also used to be the firehouse that was added. Um, the firehouse was added in 1950. Um, also, do you know what a silver king is? Does anyone know what kind of fish a silver king is? A tarpon. Well, uh, also, uh, who, does anyone know uh, who was the first sheriff of Tarpon Springs or Marshall? His name was Reuben Jones. He's the, he was sheriff of Tarpon Springs from 1906 to 1921, which was his death, unfortunately. And he is buried in Sakadia, which I'll be speaking about in a few moments. 
My next place is a beautiful Greek Orthodox Cathedral. It's at St. Nicholas, Greek Orthodox Cathedral. The uh, original cathedral was built in 1907. The reason why they constructed this current cathedral was for an outgoing parish. They, had, they didn't have enough room for them. So they built this beautiful cathedral. It has several notable features. And this was constructed in 1941 and completed construction in 1943. So uh, the, some of the features include Greek uh, the marble that was used uh, to build the altar was from Greece. It also was featured in the 1939-1940 World's Fair. The uh, chandeliers uh, that are the church are from Czechoslovakia. So that's interesting. The, uh, the stained glass windows are imported from Italy. So the church is almost imported, but most of it. Uh, <laughs> Still, uh, you can see it. They have, they're open. Sometimes you could go in and visit it. It's a beautiful church. You should see it. It's on Orange Street. Well, my next place, like I mentioned, is Cicadia Cemetery. Uh, the oldest tombstone is C. L. Webster, 1856-1872. Several notable people are buried here, including Anson B. K. Stafford, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. It is Sister Mary Jane, who was the first doctor of Dartmouth Springs. Baron Ritchie, who was the namesake of Port Ritchie and Newport Ritchie, as well as the mayor of Dartmouth Springs. Mr. Ritchie became a mayor in 1894 of Dartmouth Springs. Other notables are buried here also, like I said at first. Uh, Sheriff Ruben Jones is buried here. So, uh, my next site is a uh, site that's at Heritage Village currently, but that used to be in Cicadia Cemetery. That's the Stafford Memorial Pavilion. That was a memorial to Anson P.K. Stafford, which I'll be talking about a little bit more soon. So. My next uh, place I'm going to be speaking about is Rose Cemetery. Rose Cemetery is an African-American cemetery. Uh, first incorporated in 1916. Uh, the oldest tomb, uh, tombstone is dated in 1904. The burials began in the late 1800s. So it's an old uh, cemetery. But Circadian roads used to be connected, but a road split it apart, and that road is Jasmine Road. So what's, what's you can the name still, of the road down Jasmine Road. So Jasmine. Yeah. So you could visit it. Uh, yeah. My next place is the Anko Lighthouse. The lighthouse is a currently an active automated lighthouse built in 1887. Uh, you could only get there by boat. It's a state park. It was closed for some time, but they opened it again in 2018. They were started in 20, uh, 2003, as well as um, there were seven keepers from 1849, or 1887, excuse me, and 19 through 1949. So, um, you can still see the lighthouse and climb to the top today. They have tours. Uh, some boat companies off the sponge docks. You can take the boat there and climb the lighthouse if you want. They offer special tours. My next place I'm going to be talking about is a library. What library? The Dartmouth Springs Library. Uh, it has quite a history. The first location of the library, as you can see, was the old city hall. The next location was a house on Orange Street, which I don't have pictured here. But the third location was the arcade building. The fourth location was an alleyway of the ALS building, and that alleyway was called Library Lane. That's what it was nicknamed. So whenever you hear Library Lane in Tarpon Springs, you know it was referred to that alleyway. And that's between that Ellis building and St. Nicholas, that you can see his back to. So you can visit it. And the fourth location, yes, the fourth or fifth, is the Tarpon Springs Heritage Museum. Uh, it's now today, but it used to be the library near the by uh, Clare Park. 
And this is a car built in 1996, so it's not that old. But that's the history of the Tarpon Springs uh, Library. You can see a Tarpon picture here in the fountain, too. My next thing I'm going to be speaking about is the Historical Society. The railroad was always prevalent in Tarpon Springs with the Orange Belt and Atlantic Coastal. So, uh, the original depot, unfortunately, was destroyed by a fire in 1908. They built the second one in 1909. That's the second location and, of the depot. So uh, you could still visit it today. It's now converted into the Historical Society. The Tarkin Historical Society has been operating there since the 1970s, so you could go uh, see them today. My next place is Currents. Currents is a fancy restaurant, but it had also uh, several uses to the building. It was built in 1905. It used to house two grocery stores, a meat market, a barber shop, several saloons over the years, a coffee shop, a pool room, a, and a cigar shop. It was used for the fight scene of beneath the 12th mile Reef, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so you can still see uh, uh, the fight scene where it took place, the bar, where they fell on that in Currents. They still have evidence of it. What film was that? I'm sorry. Beneath the 12th mile Reef, here it is. It was a film done in 1953 by uh, Robert Wagner, was in it, Terry Moore, Gilbert Rowling, and Peter Graves. It was released uh, by 20th Century Fox. Part of it was filmed in Tarpon Springs. And uh, you could watch uh, it on YouTube, or the library has copies to check out of the movie. So even this library has a copy of this one. This one up here, 16 Fathoms Deep, was mostly based in Tarpon Springs. It featured Lon Chaney, Lloyd Bridges, uh, and it was done by Urban Allen Productions. That is completely on YouTube, and you got you can see a lot of the Tarpon Springs sites in the Sponge Exchange. One of us the Sponge Exchange before it was a shopping village. You can still see what they did there with auction and sponges. It's a really cool movie I've seen. I've seen both of those. Actually, they're both of those. So if you want to know more about Tarpon Springs and movies, go check this out. My uh, other location I'm going to be speaking about that had another interest in history is the Taylor Arcade. This building was built in 1910. It was the originally uh, featured at least a car shop, which moved at, uh, then it was a pool room. And it was a barber shop and originally a grocery store. Florida Power also had an office there uh, in the Taylor Arcade from the 40s through the 60s. It became, and it was home to a movie theater, which later became a dance studio. Um, it now houses several retail spaces and it's the home currently for the Bayou Cafe, which is a restaurant. And you can visit it on Tarpon Avenue. My next place I'm going to be speaking about is the Safford House. The Safford House has quite the history. Uh, there was a man named Anson P.K. Safford. He was the third, uh, it was built in 1883, this house. Uh, and his sister, Anson Safford, his sister, Mary Jane, like I said, was the first doctor in Tarpon Springs. And Anson was the third governor of the Arizona Territory from July 9th through uh, 1869 through April 5th, uh, 1877. Arizona became a state. Do you know when? Does anyone know when Arizona officially became a state? Anyone have a guess? Well, 1912, Arizona became a state. So, it was a territory previous to that, so um, it, he was the third governor of that. He, be, he moved to Florida, uh, as well as, uh, I'll show you in a minute, where the original location of the Safford House was. It wasn't originally located here until the 1890s it moved to its present location. 
that's where it was located. Where this big house is today, that's the Clemson house located on the bayou. That was built in 1900. Um, and George Clemson, a Hagstall man, I'm sure, lived there, and he was the owner. Uh, and it's on Crescent Bayou, so you could still see that site today. Divided. But that's where originally, before that was built, that's where the second house was located. So you could imagine how big it was. My next place I'm going to be speaking about is the Tar Tarpon Springs Golf Course. The Tarpon Springs Golf Course was built in 1909. In 1927, the course grew from the original nine holes, which it had, to an 18 hole golf course. The original site was, uh, it is officially owned and operated by the city of Tarkin Springs as a public golf course, so you could go and play there. Uh, you don't have to be one. My next site I'm going to be speaking about is the Orpheum Theater. The Orpheum Theater used to be a, a motion picture theater. It was the first in Tarkin Springs, uh, and it was built circa 1910. So there's not an exact date, that was the closest I could get with city records, but um, there was a motion picture theater, then it was closed in 1919, then it reopened as a dance or performance theater, and now that yeah, closed again, and now it's home to retail shops. So you can kind of see the evidences of what it looked like of a movie theater. See the top there? So, you can still visit the site. It's right next to Currents and then other stores. Yeah. My next place is a historic site. It's, it's a holy site. It's a healing site also. It was uh, built in 1950, and the name of it was St. Michael's. The shrine is dedicated to St. Michael the Archangel, who appeared in a vision to an 11 year old boy, Steve. Uh, Salicus, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right, uh, who was dying of a brain tumor. St. Michael appeared to him in uh, a dream, and the boy was healed. And the parents were instructed by St. Michael to build a shrine in their backyard, so that's what they did, and they built this church, and it has healing colonies, supposedly. So you could go check it out. It's located at Hope Street. My final site I'm going to be speaking about is the Eater Mirror Sponge Warehouse, which was built in 1901. It is one of the oldest sponge warehouses still remaining. Uh, you can still visit it, uh, still operating. It uh, demonstrated how they would store and pack sponges uh, for distribution. Uh, it's located at 117 Roosevelt Boulevard. So this concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Hi, in the St. Nicholas Cathedral, is yes. there a weeping icon? Yes, supposedly you see St. Nicholas, and uh, there is a weeping icon. I've never seen it weep, but there is an icon in there, so you can visit it today as we Another question? Yes. In the naming of Tarpon Springs, yes. you said in the bayou there were fish that fish. were believed to be tarpon. tarpon. What were they actually? Supposedly, there's a, a bit of argument. The people of Tarpon like to say tarpon, but it would have been mullet, actually. So it would have been mullet, but the people of Tarpon don't like that. So that's how it's yes. 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 I believe the, the springs part of Tarpon Springs yes. is there are springs and an, coming out of an aquifer there and they attract yes. and die and they go to all mm. kinds of places. Yeah, they right? connect. They connect from the animal yeah. river to go out to the trunk. So that's how they got the So the library depicting that Tarpon yes. the Springs yep. is certainly so, a lovely way to do it. Yes, it's a huge uh, fish. Uh, they're known to be quite huge. I've never really seen one in real life, but the statues I've seen. There's yes. a picture of Ruben Jones' yeah. house. No, I don't have it. Well, with the uh, there's a picture of the first sheriff out there. You could go see that silver king of a huge tarpon fish, Ruben Jones, the first sheriff caught. So you could see it. It's huge. Yes, I'm, yes. 
when was the facade added to the St. Michael Chapel on Oak Street? Well, the chapel or the shrine was built in 1950, so I guess about that time. The actual stone facade seems to be a recent addition. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, in the 80s. Probably, yes. Yes. The uh, sponge industry died because of the uh, synthetic sponges yes. that were made. How many sponge uh, businesses are left? Uh, um, are left few in Tarpon Springs. The sponge industry does continue. Right. It doesn't die. I couldn't put an exact number because there's some still remaining in Tarpon Springs. And you can see the different old boats too in uh, Tarpon Springs if you go along the docks. Yes. Across from the Stafford House, yes. there's an Episcopal church yes. that has the a famous term. artist, but they closed yeah, it. Yeah, George. Uh, Are you going to cover that in the future? Yes. It's that in would my be book. Very, that would, oh, it is in your book. Yeah, it's the Unitarian Universalist but Church. But the artwork in it is very significant. Yeah, George Ennis Jr. Uh -huh. uh, he was a famous painter. Unfortunately, they've had some problems with the foundation of the church. You can't visit it. Closed right it. now, they closed it. But he did a certain green. Yes, it's a green uh, landscape background. So you can see it's beautiful paintings. I think that's the thousand or something. So, you have any comments? I saw two pictures of the, the Safford house and the Safford something else. Which, so, which is the one where they have the Christmas uh, celebration? The Safford house. That's the, the yes, house. That right? huge house. It's out on the bayou. Yes. Yeah. Here, I want to go back and then you can see that. No, that's, 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 that's the Sabbath. That's where they have a Christmas celebration. The other thing was the Sabbath Pavilion located in, in Sakadia Cemetery. It used to be that Where is this located? This is on, uh, it's, it's by the bayou. Uh, you take a street down. Yeah, and then you turn right there and it's part of the street is located on. Uh, let me get to the exact address. I'm not sure I'll hand, but let me get to the exact address. 23 Parking Court. Yes. So that's where it's located. It's near, right across it. You see the Universalist Unitarian Church, which is here. Let me get a picture of it. Here it is, where the George Ennis, uh, George Ennis paintings are stored, or were stored. Uh, you see that building, and you go down the road, and it's right there. It's near Grand Boulevard? Yes. And here is uh, the first Baptist church. This is an old Baptist church located on the body, but it's now a shell. But you can see the interior. But you can find more sites in my book. So. Um, any more questions? Okay, yes. one more. <laughs> sure. The, the urn in, in yeah. that was for Mother Mears. Yeah. Is that in your book? Uh, the urn, no, but a uh, tribute, an old sign. Uh, as you can see, this old, uh, this is the old one. They reconstructed it, and it looks like uh, Michael and Mom. Mother Lisa, Mama Lisa. Mama Lisa. Yes. Uh, but now it looks different. So you could see the little tribute in my book, too. That was all awesome. Any more questions? Yes. Alex, the White House, it is either before or after this current photo you mentioned was on a. Clumsome House? Yes. Where is that supposed to be? It's located right on the bayou. Uh, I'll get to that address here. Not yes. It's 110 North Spring Bible. So uh, you can see yeah. it, you can see it going around the Bible. You can see it when you go drive down by the Bible, you'll see it. It's a big house. That you know. So any more questions? Well, yes. Who was the architect of the South House that rebounds it? Eddie Hoffman, he's a famous architect in uh, Tarpon, and he remodeled this uh, this uh, house, this wonderful house. 
And he also is the president, Eddie Hoffman is the current president of the Tarpon Springs Historical Museum after Peggy Crossley stepped in. Any more questions? Any more? All right, well, go ahead. Right. This concludes my uh, tour of Tarzan Springs. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you enjoyed this tour, and thank you to Rita Landa and Fort Public Library for uh, hosting me and having me presented. And I'll be here after if you want to talk with me more about Tarzan.